started at DuPont in 1974. There was over 400 employees there. That same site today has expanded. It runs faster. It runs better. There is less than 85 people that do the same work. That's the evolution of business. That is productivity gains. And we've seen that throughout this community. Yes, there's businesses that have come, there's businesses that are no longer here, but there's new businesses that have come in as well. But we've seen those changes. Are they positive? Absolutely. Because in order to stay competitive in the world in which we live, we have to get better at what we do. And I look around this room and there's a number of people that represent heavy industry that I was involved with, and they drive that every day of their career. And it's something that we're appreciative of. In the last, uh, just a little bit about the county, I don't know if anybody followed the county budget process, but in the last two years, the county budget uh, has averaged less than 1.5%. Uh, I'm going to uh, put both of those together. We've maintained services. This year we increased capital spending on roads. And uh, we've also put almost 7% total into reserves, something that we as council members and of staff have been pushing to do for a number of years, but now we're just starting to see some of the fruits of that work. And I guess I have to take my hat off to not only county staff, but my own local staff for the work they've done to make these types of things possible for our community. And what that does is it helps you in your sustainability as a community. You cannot continue to grow, you cannot continue to move forward unless you invest in infrastructure, prepare for the future, and those are two of the things that we have done, I think, very well in this community. Let's see, where am I going now? When I've traveled across this country a number of times as in my position as board and something that I've been very thankful that I've had that opportunity to do. And when I do go across the country, when I do go, go to communities, I look around at how they are different than us. One of the things that they have done is, uh, the ones that are very successful, is they pull a theme in. Especially when they're trying to drive tourism. What is the theme of their community? And when we look at what we do, what is the theme of our community for tourism? Tourism is a fleeting thing. We've had a number of great initiatives come. We have museums, we have cultural centers. But what is our overarching theme? For me, I don't see it readily identifiable. But it's something I know there are people out here through tourism, Sarnia Lampton are bringing a group of people together through SLEP, they're bringing people together to try and come up with exactly what that theme should be as we move forward. I just returned home from a vacation and it was a sailing vacation. There was nothing that they offered better than our Grand Bend Beach, nothing they offered better than our Canaterra Park. Nothing that they offered better than anywhere along the waterfront or any of our facilities. But people flock there. Why is that? And that's the question that we need to address at some point and, and continue to drive that forward to make it better. And when I've talked to people outside of this community, we are looked at as the unknown jewel of Ontario because of the beautiful beaches that we have, because of the people. And you are the people. When you go out there, you're the ambassadors for all of us, for our future. And that's the thing that is so important for all of us to continue to move forward. We need to be able to understand what are the developing trends throughout society. Society has changed. They're far different than what they were when I was young. So what does that look like? What is the next new thing that we should be working towards? When we look at the college and how it's developed and how it's evolved, they are looking at that all the time. When we look at the research part, they are doing the same type of thing. So how do all of us come on board to do that? One of the things that, uh, if we go back a number of generations, urban legend, and I know some of my counterparts from St. Clair will kind of laugh, there was a couple of brothers by the name of Telford. They wanted tourism come into, in those days, I'll call it still St. Clair Township. So what they did was they advertised albino turtles. And there was albino turtles in uh, Telford Creek. And maybe some of you have heard the story. And 
And so they advertised. They advertised in Detroit. They advertised in Chicago. And they had these great huge ships under the age of steam come and look at these albino turtles. It worked out for a couple of years until the paint started to come off of some of the turtles. <laughs> and then that part of the tourism industry kind of tailed off. So is that what we need to do? I don't think so. We have so much to offer here. If I could talk for just a moment about St. Clair Township. Um, I've enjoyed being the mayor and been on council throughout the years. And, and we have tremendous staff. And, and I know uh, John Mars is here. And I'm not sure if anyone else is. But John's been a mainstay for us on council. He's seen the evolution. He's seen the amalgamations. He's worked through them. We have a new Sombre Museum that's going to be opening here in a couple of weeks. We have the Lampton Children's Safety Village that we're going to see finally put into place, something that I know the city's been working on, all of us in the county have been working on, and so many good people have been working on. And it'll be such a great thing for our children. Infrastructure investments continue at a great pace. I was at the Sarnia Heavy Construction last night, and they said that the best prices you'll ever see in this millennium are taking place this year. And I know Sarnia is uh, super tapped as far as the work that they're doing. We're trying to do the same thing in St. Clair. Because when you go out and talk to businesses and industry, it's fine that you want them to come. But they have to have sewers, they have to have water, they have to have the infrastructure in place, they have to have energy. And without those things, which we are responsible for as elected people, it doesn't take them long to find someone else that does. And when you look at the people that we have here, the professionals, they're second to none. Whether it's in public service or whether in their private industry, we're so appreciative of the work that they do. And I just encourage all of you to continue to keep our flag high as we move forward in the next year or a number of years. And to continue to grow this great community to where it should be, where we want it to be for our children and where we need it to be for our grandchildren. So with that, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here today, and I wish you all the best.